Okay. Hi, thanks, Joanna. Um, before we get started, I actually want to show you all something. I'm currently using Google Slides, so it's it's sort of like the Google Docs version of PowerPoint. And um, when you have a Google Slides slideshow open and it's ready to present your slides, um, down here at the bottom, they actually have this option for live captions, and it picks up cap here. I'm going to click it, and it actually picks up the voice of from the microphone of whoever's talking. I'm I'm using a headset right now. I kind of hid it under my collar, but there's a microphone right next to my mouth, which is why the quality is actually going to be pretty good. Um, if I were using the microphone in my computer, which is a bit farther away, the the quality would be less. But just since um, we're, we're here to talk about access to communication and resources for deaf and hard of hearing kids and their families, I just wanted to show you this really cool feature. Um, so it's, it's right down here. And if you're curious about it later, we can always, I'm happy to show it to anybody who wants to know. Um, okay, so I wanted to give you an idea of um, who I am and where this came from. So um, I am a bilingual speech language pathologist. I do, I do therapy and assessment in both American Sign Language and English. Um, I live and work in the Sacramento area. And uh, this is my ninth year as a speech language pathologist or SLP. Um, I worked in the schools for most of those years, though not all of them. And as of right now, I, I work with uh, mostly deaf and hard of hearing students, but some hearing students as well, and um, really all ages, birth to 18. So um, just to, um, it's always a good idea to give some, some disclosures just so, the, so that you know sort of where I'm coming from. I do work for a school district called San Juan Unified. And, however, they're not paying me for this presentation. All of this work is completely my own. Nothing I share today reflects any sort of opinions or viewpoints of San Juan Unified. This was all just um, something that I put together through um, a desire to find and curate resources for my own students. Um, some, so non-financial disclosures, just a, I, these sorts of things are generally a good thing to share before a presentation. I am a professional member of these organizations. Um, I'm not on the boards of any of them, though I, I have been on the board of California Educators of the Deaf in the past. Um, really where this came from was um, as the school started shutting down, Right, and society started shutting down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, Joanna and I had been, who, who just introduced me from Hands and Voices, um, she asked if I might be interested in doing some sort of a training for parents on how to promote communication at home with their kids now that schools are closed or were about to close. I don't remember exactly where it was on that timeline. Um, and at the same time, I noticed that educators and parents were sharing resources widely everywhere on, on social media and email and among my colleagues. And um, a lot of it was lists of links or here's this one thing, here's this other thing. And there's just this absolute wealth of information out there. And we are in that information age now. Um, However, it got really overwhelming. So schools were closing. Also, my fellow SLPs were having lots of really frantic conversations with each other saying, oh man, are we, are we about to move to telepractice? Are we all about to start having to do therapy online? All of my materials are at school and it's closed. I don't know how to do this. How do I how do, I do my, my best quality work online when I've never done that before and I don't know where anything is and I'm getting all these links for stuff but I just it's it's too much um, 
So we all needed access to resources. And a lot of families were saying the same thing. My kids are at home all day. Um, I've been trying to keep up with their ASL, but I just can't communicate with my kids the way I want to. Or, um, you know, the school was working on these skills all day, and now it's on me, and I'm not sure where to start. So everyone needed access, but it's just too much and um, too confusing, hard to find anything. And I found that for myself, it was too hard for me to find the resources that I need as well. So I, I just started making this thing. Um, I've noticed a few more people have, have just joined us. Hi, welcome. Um, I was just giving a little, a little introduction to how this whole thing came about um, as a response to the COVID-19 pandemic and everybody need, needing access to information, but in a way that we can actually use. So I started organizing this all in one place. I'm a Virgo, I like things organized. And if I can't find anything, then my stress level goes, goes up. So I just started putting it together and then thought, you know, I wanna be able to share this with people because there's a lot and, you know, there's no need to hoard information, I should share it. So I made this thing, which Joanna actually called Razi's Resources. And I was like, okay, I kinda like that, that's cute. Um, it's a spreadsheet not very exciting um it's in google sheets so it's sort of like the google online version of microsoft excel um it's a living document which means that whatever changes i make live go live immediately um i made it so that i'm the only one who can edit it just so that it doesn't fall into chaos however a link to this spreadsheet is available on the California Hands and Voices website. Um, they have a COVID-19 resources link, and then you can just click on Marzi's resources for communication at home, and it'll take you right there. Um, if you wanna click through it while we do this, feel free, but I am gonna be sharing my screen so you can see it. Um, this is a, a living document, it's constantly um, being updated, if I find a cool new resource, I'm going to plop it in there. Um, I'm always open to edits if you find a link that's broken, anything like that. So I just wanted to give a quick little intro to what we're doing today. And let's jump in. So here it is. I hope you can all see it. Um, if you can't if you can't see it, please say so in the chat. But like like I said, it's just it's just a spreadsheet. But this is the front page, and it's my my email address is right here. So um, if you have any edits you want to propose, or after this is over, if you um, want to get in touch with me and let me know about any changes or questions or you know, anything like that. Um, fellow professionals, I know we all have those questions where we're like, so I have this one kid, what would be good for them? <laughs> um, that's how so many of our conversations start. Be free to get in touch. I put my Gmail right there because like I said, this isn't official for my school district or anything, it's just a thing that I'm doing. Um, I put a little disclaimer at, at the bottom here, just basically saying that these are all just links. I'm not officially endorsing anything. Um, I'm ju it just sharing information. Also, I, this spreadsheet here, now do you see this little link thing right there? Every field that has a link, the link will show up as soon as you click into it, like that. And then if you click it, it'll take you straight there. Now this is, this is a, um, a crowdsource, the DHH accessible, e-learning resources is a crowdsourced spreadsheet put together by a bunch of um, teachers of the deaf that I happened upon in my exploration of different resources. And a lot of these came from that, uh, but then I added a whole ton of stuff to it. So I decided to create my own thing. I just wanted to give them credit, um, those contributors for all of their hard work. Um, okay, so here at the bottom, I hope you can see there are little tabs. So we're on the introduction page right now. 
as you if you click on each tab, see it'll take you to oops, it's all the way down at the bottom. It'll take you to each tab. You can keep on clicking and scroll through them, or you can hit the little arrows to go left or right. See, there's a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to the left, and what I'm going to do is is go through each tab. Um, and highlight just a couple of resources on that tab. Um, I, I made them orange just to remind myself to look at them and I'll leave them orange for a couple of days if you all want to go back in and find the ones that I highlighted in this talk and then I'm going to take off the highlights because these aren't official endorsements or anything. They're just highlights. So um, this first page is Parent and Family Support. You see the title down at the bottom and on the tab and up at the top. Um, it starts off with Parent and Family Organizations. And um, one I just wanted to let some of you know about is an organization called the American Society for Deaf Children, or ASDC. Their website um, has a whole bunch of resources, and I'm going to actually click on these so you can see them. Here's the link, see, right here. And, it, and open up their website. Um, so they have, all, they have a whole bunch of resources for families. They have an annual conference, scholarships. Um, and I'll get into some of their other perks later. So that's what their website looks like. At least for me, I find that if all I see are links and I can't actually picture what something looks like, it doesn't mean anything. So I want, that's why I wanted to show you. But I really wanted to highlight their knowledge center right here. So if you're curious about visual language or how to learn ASL, if you want to find providers or resources in your area, those are great. And their ASL stories directory is very cool. It has a long list of stories by age range or by title with videos of people signing these stories. Very cool. Just recently discovered that one. The next one, you all know about hands and voices. I'm not going to talk about that. Um, the next one is, um, this is a website called babyhearing.org. So it looks like it might actually have a similar photo. <laughs> um, but this has information about all kinds of things. For example, so it starts with newborn hearing screening. Then they have some information about hearing in general. So if people are like, well, but so he can hear a little bit, but not everything. How does that work? I'm not really sure. You can find that here. If you need support about hearing aids and cochlear implants, that's the next one. About language and learning, support for parents, and resources for professionals. Um, so there's just a, just a ton of information on here. All of these um, websites for, for different organizations, they just have a ton. There's so much. And I tried to sort of um, summarize what they include on the website as well and then if like if there's a cost to join or if it's just a website or that kind of thing um okay i'm scrolling down i recently learned about this one so there's a, a company i believe organization called sign on that that provides um american sign language instruction to um, to parents if you're if you're interested, but they also and we'll get into that later But they also have this cool thing called sign on ePals where um, for children of, of all ages up like You can do a parent in me with with a young children young child up through high school It pairs kids up or puts them in small groups with other deaf and hard of hearing kids and it doesn't matter whether they communicate through ASL or, um, or spoken language, they put the kids together with kids who communicate in a similar way. Um, and there's, it, the, the link here is the form to sign up for that. 
So if you're curious, check it out. Okay, I'm gonna keep scrolling down. Last one, um, I mentioned, you know, so may maybe you've been told your child has a moderate hearing loss, okay? And it's like, okay, I sort of get what that's like in theory. Oh, I just clicked this link right here. The vision and hearing loss simulator. Okay, that takes us here and it shows, you can, let's say we want to choose the family setting. And then you can choose what level of hearing you want to be able to hear. Let's say we pick moderate. Oh, something went wrong with the website. Well, there. Yeah. So point being, um, you can choose a scene and then choose what level of hearing you want to simulate and then play the video at, with the different levels and you'll be able to um, get a simulation for what the world sounds like with that level of hearing. So for hearing parents who are trying to understand what your child might be hearing or not, this is a good way to understand that. Um, Joanna, can I just get a confirmation that when I click the link, they are in fact showing up for people to see? Would you mind just, uh... okay, good, thank you. Okay, moving on. So, um, oh, there's, I just put, the, put this here. Um, Parent Links is an organization to support parents with deaf and hard of hearing children under three. And um, there's a space available in Northern California, or actually there, at the time I posted this, there were five positions available for parent links mentors. So parents who want to be a mentor to other parents, I believe. Um, more, there's more information about it here. If, you're, if you are, you know, you feel like you're ready to be a mentor to someone else. I'm realizing I may not have put the link there, but if you're interested, shoot me an email and I'll help connect you with whoever you need to be connected with. Next tab. See how I'm down at the bottom where it says language for zero to three. All right. Um, so this is for, yeah, for kids zero to three. So this is mostly parent support. So I'm, I'm clicking right here on serve and return from Harvard. Serve and return is a really cool, um, is an important concept for developing language in young children. And, and this is all about brain building through serve and return. It's basically how communication is an interaction. We, um, if, if, our, if a child communicates something to us, then we need to be responding and back and forth and showing them that communication is a give and take. Um, so there's more information about it here on that website. The video, the article is, is in written English and then there are videos that, um, are in spoken English with auto captions. So not perfect, but it's not nothing. Next one is right here. This is called Babies and Hearing Loss, an interactive, an interactive notebook for families with, whoops, I lost it, for families with a young child who is deaf or hard of hearing. Um, it is a PDF document, actually. It's a really big PDF. It's 225 pages. But honestly, I use this all the time. It was developed by the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. And it's got all kinds of great stuff. So here's a table of contents. It has stories of celebration, talking about um, you know, happy stories of deaf and hard of hearing children, um, bonding and, and Bonding through early communication. Um, you know, if you're used to speaking to babies and that being the primary way that you that you communicate with an infant, and now you have a deaf infant or a hard of hearing infant who we're not entirely sure how much of your speech they're hearing clearly, this gives some great suggestions for how to bond with your baby through visual means and tactile means through touch and all of that. Um, it has some milestones for communication, myths about deafness, um, 
information about um, deafblind children or children with other disabilities, siblings, and then there's just a ton after that. So um, this one's really, really useful. This is on the Hands and Voices. This next one is on the Hands and Voices website. Um, it's called their Communication Considerations, A through Z. So it's, and it's all about um, what is such and such, whatever your question is, what issues are going on related to that, where can I find more information about it? So let's say I went to S, I clicked S. So let's say you have questions about sign language. You have questions about signed exact English and you're not sure what the difference is, um, et cetera. There's, there's so much in here that you, where you can look up information for yourself. And as Joanna said, Hands and Voices is all about um, sharing information with parents in a way that is non-judgmental. And so um, the, these are here, this is here to give information in a non-judgmental way. All right. Oh, this is called Hands Land. It is, um, it's there, I put their website on here as well, but the link is to their Amazon page. I'm not telling anyone to go buy anything, but if you want to, you can. Basically, it's like a little TV show, but each video is um, is only two or three minutes and they're less than a dollar. And they are cute little ASL rhymes and rhythms. So um, you know how hearing it, it, hearing children learn language through rhythm and through music and nursery rhymes. It's this is the same idea, but it's in ASL. And, um, and they're, they're cute, they're repetitive. You don't have to know ASL to do them. Um, in fact, I believe they're captioned for the adults. So um, they're very approachable. All right, I'm going to do one more on this page and then I'll move through them a little bit faster. There's just so much out there for families with young children and I feel like that's so important when um, you're still just getting started. These are webcasts. I believe they were all um, designed by Gallaudet University, which is the, whoops, let's pretend I didn't just mess that up. Like I said, this is all live. And of course, I've just deleted something. Yikes. Okay, well, hopefully I will fix that. Um, that was the, the link for Handland. I will put it back and land. I will come back and fix that. <laughs> um, anyway, Gallaudet University is the um, the university in Washington D.C. for deaf and hard of hearing students. They also accept hearing students, but all instruction is in ASL. And um, they have created a whole bunch of really useful webcasts that we can watch. There are many or most of them are in ASL with English captions and voiceover. Some of them are also available in Spanish. The one I'm gonna show you is available in Spanish. This is about family, it's called Setting Language in Motion. And it's all about family support and learning more about, um, about babies who are deaf and hard of hearing. So here it is. And they've got a lot more resources right here as well. It's easy, you can choose your language and watch it. Okay, moving on. So I'm gonna click the little right arrow right here and that'll take me into more tabs. So language for school-aged kids. Um, some of these are downloadable PDFs. You can just download it on your computer and print it or look at it on your computer. And I'm going to scroll through these a bit faster now. Um, a lot of these PDFs were actually designed for speech pathologists. Um, if you're looking for this spreadsheet, it was shared, I believe 
yeah, it was shared um, farther up in the chat. You can find it there. And um, so a lot of these were designed for SLPs, speech language pathologists, but parents, you can use them too. Um, and you are kind of your child's SLP in a lot of ways these days, now that we're all stuck at home. Um, so this one, a lot of these resources come from a website called Teachers Pay Teachers. Some of you may be aware of them, others may not. Um, and I'm sharing them because they, these are offered by teachers or SLPs who um, are offering them up for free right now, either right now or permanently. But this is something that one of us might send home with one of our students as homework. This is a quick little preview. These are ways to target speech and language skills for example, while playing with a toy bus, it says to speech and language homework toy bus. That's what it says on here in case it's too small. Or speech and language homework bubble. How to add language to your play with your child. So that's really good for younger children. Um, if you know that you can build your child's language through books, but you want some tips, this is a good one, the reading tip sheets for parents. It's available in 13 languages. See, so they have tips for parents of babies, toddlers, up through third grade. And here's the list of languages that they have available. Really cool. Okay, there we go. Um, this website is called myasltext.com and they have free memberships for kids for the month of April 2020 if you email this address over here that I'm circling with my mouse. So I'm not going to click into it, but that's there. And let's see. Um, oh, so for older kids, if they're learning written English, this website is really nice to teach some of the English grammar rules. So um, if they're struggling with reading and writing, it may be a bit much for them to read and understand, but you as a parent may be able to read and understand what the rule means and then use the exercises with them. See, so if you pick whichever tense they're learning and you click on it, then it actually has a, a video, a captioned video about how it works. And then it gives you some exercises to work on. So like I said, if they're struggling with reading and writing, then the captions may not help them so much. But it could help you as a parent understand how that, that part of grammar works and be able to help work with them to teach it. OK. Moving on to storytelling. Now, um, some of you may have noticed that um, ever since the world shut down, People have started signing children's literature all over the internet, and you can find it in just a ton of different places. Um, for example, people have started using the hashtag Operation ASL Storytime all over different social media platforms. If you're social media savvy, check it out, Oper hashtag Operation ASL Storytime. Uh, but there are other resources as well. Um, here's one called ASL eBooks and Resources for Deaf Kids. It's just a Google Doc that somebody put together. And, and it even says how long they're available. Put together by the Deaf Hearing Communication Center. So um, lots of information on there. I got some of these links from them and kind of cleaned it up to make it easier to read. So um, some of that information is on my, my 
spreadsheet. Um, just a couple of places to find these videos. The Deaf Performing Arts Network, or DPAN, has kids' stories in ASL and they're performers, so you know it's going to be fun to watch. See? So here's where, you, yeah, see they've, they've got kids telling the stories, adults telling the stories, here are some of the examples. So if, if your kids really like Pizza Cat, here's one of Pizza Cat. You know, if they really like Rainbow Fish, here's Rainbow Fish. And they've got um, varying backgrounds and all kinds of good stuff. Um, I already showed this one, American Society for Deaf Children. Their ASL Stories directory is searchable by type. Not, I don't know if it's searchable, but easy to find a particular title. So that's really nice. Um, this one is really unique. Um, the Motion Light Lab, they've also made um, storybook apps. I believe, I believe they're tied to VL2, which is a, um, a, a research think tank related to visual language and learning. Anyway, they have created these fantastic ASL literacy activities. So it's not just the story, but it, it, it gives you activities to do too. So, you know, they've got their welcome page and it explains more about it. And then they have their apps. Yeah, they are tied to VL to the, the researchers I was talking about. But then check this out. So for a given, so for week one, you know, if you wanted to work your way through it, this is one story and it's on it. I believe these, these stories are all on their app, which you can find here. But uh, so for Monday, somebody reads the story with you. But then Tuesday, they have some worksheets to go with the story. And then Wednesday, they did, a, they did a live stream and they talked about different signs for, signs for walking and other English words. And in the app, they, um, you can click on words for vocabulary. Um, it shows the English word with, with the sign. It cuts away to a person signing it, and then it shows the English word. It's really interactive, really, really cool stuff. So um, check it out, especially if you have a child who's starting to read. But you know, kids who aren't reading it would enjoy it too. Um, all right, I have a couple, a couple. Um, storytelling links for spoken English. Um, one has is in English with no captions and the other does have captions. Um, but since I was focusing specifically on resources for deaf and hard of hearing kids, um, that's where I focus most of my energy. Okay, um, now if you have a child who speaks and you wanna work on their speech skills at home, um, this blog post is really useful. It's called 20, Five minute speech therapy activities you can do at home. It's just a blog post whoops, um, made by two SLPs who are also a couple. And these activities are fantastic because they explain why short, frequent activities might actually be more effective than longer sit down sessions working on speech. And it helps you figure out what might be appropriate to your child and start with something that's easier so they don't get frustrated. They kind of talk, talk their way through it. Um, ignore the ads. So they explain what you do during your five minutes, um, a bunch of games you can do to work on their speech sounds and make it fun and interesting. So if you're not sure what speech sounds your child is working on or exactly which, you know, which sounds or types of words would be good, good to practice, talk to your SLP or someone who knows your child's IEP goals. But um, this, this is a good, a good way to get, um, to get that practice in. 
Um, if you want worksheets, something on paper, um, Heather Speech Therapy is another good resource. Okay. Um, can we can we post a link to the? Oh, it, it looks like the link to this resource guide is in, is in the chat. Um, if you scroll up in the chat a bit, you should be able to find it. But it's C A Hands and Voices Hands and Voices dot org slash COVID hyphen nineteen hyphen resources. And then on that page. Um, under webinars, it's just, it's called Rosie's Resources for Communication at Home. And you can click on that. So anyway, Heather's Speech Therapy. Um, I'm just on free downloads, her free downloads page. She's got some good, some good worksheets. Um, so if you want something a little bit more hands-on to do, especially with an older child, check it out. Um, I know that I, in therapy with my children, with my students who are working on speech, um, I use something called visual phonics a lot. Um, if your SLP has told you that they're using visual phonics with your child, this video shows, visual phonics is a set of hand motions that accompany speech sounds. Um, some of them include the letter from a the ASL alphabet, for example, the long vowels are A, E, that kind of thing. Um, some of them are more related to how you produce the sound. So for example, when you make the, the sound for the letter P, a puff of air comes out of your mouth. So it's for the P sound. Um, anyway, this video here just, it goes one by one through all of the hand motions. Um, if you're curious what sounds your child, what, or what, what progression sounds, speech sounds usually emerge as children are learning to speak, this what sounds should my child be saying, this, if you click that, it gives you some, like a chart of um, like what the younger sounds are and the older sounds. So, you know, if you have a younger child, we wouldn't expect them to have the older sounds yet, that kind of thing. It's worth checking out. Um, if you are looking for resources regarding listening skills or audiology information, um, these are a bunch of resources about that. For children who are just now learning to listen for the first time, let's say they just got their hearing aids for the first time or they recently received a cochlear implant or two, that sort of thing, the learning to listen sounds are basically um, a set of, sort of, they're sort of like sound effects where a child learns to associate a sound with an object. And this explains what that's all about, but that basically before they're ready to understand speech, they have to understand that sound has meaning. And so this describes what it's all about. But once you move down, there we go, it actually has some cards to use with children and it tells you exactly what sound we're associating with that object as they're just learning to listen for the first time. Um, the, the different cochlear implant companies, um, so Medel, Cochlear, um, Advanced Bionics, they all have massive amounts of what they call like rehab resources, but therapy resources for listening and language, and not all of it requires listening. So if you have a child who's primarily a signer, um, some of these do have a lot of just, just plain old language resources as well. So I put those websites on here. Um, but this one I wanted to show you, it's about listening fatigue and effort. It's a YouTube video with captions. I'm not going to click into it, but it, it's um, adults who have some amount of hearing loss just talking about what listening fatigue and effort are like for them. Um, if they've been listening all day, 
and they're feeling really tired by the end of the day or um, what it feels, what listening fatigue feels like to them. Because I think sometimes our kids who do use some, some amount of listening, they're not able to explain to us what it feels like. And so hearing from adults with a similar experience, I thought would be really valuable um, and just happened across this. So um, it, it does have captions. Um, I already said that the, uh, whoops, that the different cochlear implant companies have um, lots of resources. The listening room is the, the resources from Advanced Bionics. You don't need an account, or you might need an account just to log in, but that's it. You don't need to like prove that your child has a device from that company or anything like that. Um, okay. Oh, um, some troubleshooting and um, taking care of listening devices. Um, there, there's, this is a YouTube video about um, cleaning hearing aids. And then this is a PDF about children and hearing aids. So that could be useful. Um, if, if your child has a cochlear implant and you want to understand what it is or how it works better, or you have family members who are like, how does that even work? This one right here, how a cochlear implant works. It's a video that, go that describes that. This one is called Cochlear Implants, Navigating a Forest of Information. And this is again from Gallaudet University their National Deaf Education Center has a ton of stuff on it. And this um, is broken up into different trees, meaning different pieces of the, the forest of information. And it's available in English and Spanish. And it, it answers lots of questions, talks about what's the surgery like, how do you make decisions about it, what does it what's education gonna be like, um, just uh, lots of information about cochlear implants. So, um, and they try to be as unbiased as possible. Um, if you, if you, let's say you've been given an audiogram, with, right, which is the result of, of your child's hearing test. Um, and it looks like this chart and you're sort of like, okay, they explained it while I was there, but emotions were high and then I got home and I'm like, what even is this thing? First of all, your teacher of the deaf or SLP should be able to help you understand it. But this one is called how to read an audiogram and determine degrees of hearing loss. And it just helps you understand what it all means. It's a bit technical but it does describe what it means with some examples. And there's some more information on this website as well. And there, there are a few different audiogram um, web, related websites right here too. You know, some, something different works for everyone, so. Um, if your child uses an FM system, which might also be called a, um, a remote microphone, or a hearing or a hearing assistance technology, hearing assistive technology, lots of terms for this. This video is really, really informative. It's called um, Hearing Loss in the Classroom. I'm not gonna watch the whole thing, but it shows a child. I'm trying to pause it. Hold on. Okay. Um, you can turn on the captions. This video, it's, it's four and a half minutes long, and it, it shows what a classroom sounds like to a child who uses hearing aids, both with and without the FM system going. And so it simulates the background noise um, and what it sounds like when the teacher is right next to him versus far away, et cetera. Um, it's a really good demonstration, especially for hearing parents who are trying to either understand it for yourself or to advocate for your child to have something like this in your classroom.
Okay, so I just clicked the tab down here that says additional disabilities. Um, this is just a, um, a set of symbols that are visual support that parents can print out if you want like pictures of things in your in your house, like little icons. Um, sometimes that can be helpful for communication to um, give your child options. Like let's say you want to ask them what they want to eat, but they don't yet have the vocabulary for all of your all of their favorite foods. Um, you can print out. I'm looking for a good. They have they have suggestions for how to do it, but let's say you can you can even make pictures for a day at the zoo is the example that they're giving to help support the vocabulary and have them pick what animal they want to go see next. Um, so anyway, it's here for parents, and it can be really good if you want to make a visual schedule for the day to show what you're going to do. Like first we have to do this, and then we're going to do that. If if you want to use something with symbols, but you're not sure how, there are just lots of different options out there. This is just one. Um, but talk to your. You can also talk to your teacher or your speech pathologist because they use these sorts of things all the time. It may be a different system, but it's still the same thing. Um, this is a webcast about um, deaf and hard of hearing children with autism spectrum disorders. And then this is a website for California deafblind services. And it does have some of the resources in Spanish. So just to throw out some more um, resources out there. So this is uh, Children's Craniofacial Association. Um, so for example, if your child has microtia or atresia um, or a different craniofacial difference, um, they provide support to families as well. All right, I'm going to click the Academics tab at the bottom. And just to show you, there's a lot of stuff on here. I'm not a classroom teacher. A lot of this is not really my thing, but it's there. So, you know, check it out. I just got that from other educators. Social skills. If you want, oh my goodness, we are very short on time. So. Um, I highlighted a couple that are that are good to look at. So, um, working on social issues with your child. This is specifically from a website for families with um, deaf and hard of hearing kids. Deaf friendly games for a children's party. You know, when we're able to have parties again. And there's just a lot more out there. Um, some are deaf and hard of hearing specific. Some aren't. This one I really did want to highlight, though. These are online ASL learning resources for parents. I, um, I highlighted the ones that are free. ASL Connect um, ha is through Gallaudet University, and it has free introductory videos for parents. See, so they've got basic ASL vocabulary. And these are just videos you can look at any time by theme. Or free online ASL lessons. They're online interactive lessons. So there are some websites out there that are just like, here's a whole lot of vocabulary. Go practice. We've seen over and over again that's not useful for learning a language. Some amount of interaction is necessary. So I'm, I'm suggesting um, options that provide for some level of interaction. Sign on, I mentioned them before. If you if you join the American Society for Deaf Children, ASCC, which is um, which this, this link will take you straight there. Um, they sign on is offering five free 30 minute sessions for the first, I believe, five hundred families who request codes. I don't know if they've hit that five hundred already, but it's worth checking. And they also have Inter online interactive lessons, and they're all about supporting families. The other one here is um, some of you may have may have seen or heard of the TV show Signing Time, right? Lots of um, songs and um, 
teaching science for families and children. Um, Scienit ASL is a curriculum for learning the actual language of ASL and not just individual signs. It's best for older children and adults. So if you have older siblings who want to learn that sort of thing. Um, it's, it's free for parents of deaf and hard of hearing kids under three. Um, if your child is over three, you do have to pay for it. Um, it's about $50 per unit, but each unit has a massive amount of content. All right, um, I put some information about interpreting here. If you have a child who uses interpreters at school, you're welcome to check it out or who will use interpreters at school. Um, these are YouTube channels with great videos that you can watch with your kids. I highlighted some of the ones that I've used the most often, but please, you know, check out whichever ones you want. Um, I tried to summarize what their content includes. Um, if you're a social media type person, I put just some suggestions, not um, ideas for people, people or organizations you can follow um, for ASL, for listening and spoken language, and for audiology. And highlighted some of them, but by all means, check out whoever you want. Regarding multilingualism, um, I put, just put in, I highlighted some articulation um, norms for Spanish and English. Basically, if you have a child who also speaks Spanish, um, the sounds are a bit different than they are in English, but this will just give you an idea of how some kids de develop their sounds in each language. Um, there are a couple other resources too. Um, if you want to understand IEPs or IFSPs better. An IEP is an individualized education plan for children over th or three and over. An IFSP is an individualized family service plan for children under three. Um, Warmline Family Resource Center has some great trainings on how all of that stuff works. So feel free to check it out. Um, I have a tab for behavior. So, you know, if you want some help with behavior, look at that. Just reflecting the world we live in right now, I made a COVID-19 tab. Um, death in Scrubs is two deaf doctors on Facebook talking all about um, what's going on in the world right now, um, information about the coronavirus, et cetera. And then this one, I ju just saw put out by um, the American Society for Deaf Children. It's a, it's a book about social distancing for young children to help them understand why we have to stay separate from each other right now. And it's a video um, in, a, in, in spoken English with ASL on the screen. And that's pretty much it. Um, the accessibility tools here, how to add captions to your Facebook Live videos. And then also if you need some help um, advocating for accessibility for your child in this online instruction world. Um, these are some tips. This last one is just exercise and entertainment. Um, just some things that I found to get your kids moving, but it's not deaf specific. Um, and I'm so sorry that, that I went so long. There's just a lot in here and we only have an hour. So I'm gonna stop there um, and go back to the introduction page. Um, so there was a there was a question earlier. Do you know if any of your ASL story links might be appropriate for use in a gen ed or general education or not DHH classroom to help students be exposed to or learn some ASL? Um, something an elementary school teacher could share as an optional activity, perhaps. Um, Potentially, I think um, some of the some of the uh, ASL classes, the online ASL classes, would be more useful for actually learning the language of ASL. So, if you want, I'm going to go to the ASL classes link. ASL Connect, that's the Gallaudet one. 
some of that ASL for free, like the basic basic vocabulary, I think would be better. Um, but yeah, any any of those stories couldn't hurt. Um, you know, if if they're if they're learning the story in class also, and then they get to see it in ASL, that's really cool because they can see that it's um, a language and not just individual signs. Um, however, if there aren't actually any deaf kids in the room who are going to benefit from watching the, the story in ASL, then the deaf person on screen is doing what um, what some deaf adults in my life have called air guitar. Their hands are just moving. And yeah, it means something to people who know ASL, but if none of the kids in the class actually know ASL, then what, what's it for? Right, all they're seeing is hands moving and it doesn't mean anything. So I think it's, um, it would be more productive to, um, if they're gonna be learning some, some ASL, to target it to let's actually learn it and have the kids do it back and practice it in an interactive sort of way because language is interactive, right? Um, okay, we are at four o'clock. This is Johanna. Rosie, I want to thank you so much um, for providing all these resources for us. Um, Absolutely. When we close this webinar, it should bring up a survey. Um, this data helps us a lot with knowing, was this um, webinar useful for you? Um, did the accessibility accommodations work the way they were supposed to? All this information helps us um, when we go out to seek grants, um, if we um, need to improve our accommodations for you guys in the future and so I just we really cannot say thank you enough um, for being here today um, thank you guys for joining us and Rossi thank you and so um, yes, absolutely and oh, I just wanted to add one last thing if you ever want to follow up with me right here on the on the spreadsheet on that introduction page the very first one my email address is right there so please feel free to be in touch. I'm working from home these days. Um, I see a lot of really familiar names in the, in the, the attendees here. So, you know, um, if, you, if you liked it or you found something to be especially helpful that's not on here, please let me know and I will add it. You know, I really wanna know who's using this. Um, a lot of time went into it. And, um, you know, I know I'm using it in my therapy, but, you know, especially if parents are finding particular resources to be especially helpful, then, you know, let, let me know um, and I will make sure to add them or look into using them with my family. So thank you everybody so much for being here and um, happy communicating. Let's keep that communication going. Yes, and I just wanna give a big thank you to Christy O'Neill who was here to interpret for us today. Thank you, Christy. Yes, thank you. Okay, bye.